Hello, everyone. Oh, I hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving. And uh, for this video, I will be uh, uh, discussing how you could uh, still use a third or fourth generation Intel chipset uh, computer, base computer, uh, now at the present by just making a few upgrades like I have because I'm still using a third generation i5 based computer and I also have another I have two uh, fourth generation i7 um, based computers I have an i7 4790k which I use at home for work and I also have a i7 4790 computer at where I work so I'm still using those computers even now so um, the way I kept them up to date was um, by making a few upgrades but it's been um, eight years since the first third generation i3 i5 i7 uh, motherboard and chipsets were released however you can still bring your computer up to date in late 2020 so I'm still using up so I'm basically still using my i53570 K at home for for even games even and I'm using i7 4790 K base computer for work I'm using it at home of course so um, I did perform a number of upgrades in the past eight years to keep them um, relevant so um, the good thing about third and fourth generation Intel chipsets uh, is that they have UEFI based uh, BIOSes on the motherboards so this is pretty much up to date it's not using a legacy BIOS it's using a modern UEFI BIOS so uh, you can technically use the latest video cards for these types of motherboards without any without running into any problems like uh, not having uh, the graphics card not post when you get into the operating system or something like that that won't happen with third or fourth generation um, based Intel chipsets so uh, I will go over a number of upgrades you can make to modernize your old computer if you have one of these that is so uh, let's go over the modern upgrade option overview and um, for storage you can put in a 2.5 inch SSD in both a third and fourth generation Intel chipset um, that's not going to be a problem and the SATA ports in these computers are pretty up to date. They they use uh, SATA uh, 6 connect. They use SATA 6 connectors which enable you to get uh, about 6 to 750 gigabytes per second out of those ports and uh, you could use the maximum potential for your 2.5 inch SSD and for a fourth generation Intel chipset you can use a um, M.2 NVMe um, SSD in it which is pretty up to date even by today's standards as for video cards you can add a um, you can add any video card in here if you want to add a GeForce uh, GTX 770 you can do that up to the latest GeForce card which is a GeForce RTX 3080 it cost a lot of money for the latest video cards but if you can afford it you can put one in there and it should just work as long as you're using a modern operating system like Windows 10 and I'm using Windows 10 on both of my computers I mean all three of my computers I'm sorry and uh, they all have PCI Express X16 3.0 ports both the third and the fourth generation so that's not going to be a problem you should be good on that and as for RAM 
um, they use DDR3 240 pin um, DRAM module so um, they will support up to I guess PC 10 10,600 that's 1333 megahertz uh, PC what 1200 800 that's 1600 megahertz and you can get up to PC 3 um, 19,200 megahertz at 2,400 megahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. Um, if you want to use XMP mode, you can on the later um, fourth generation motherboards, like the one that I have. It's, it's a Z97 Pro motherboard. I've been using XMP and well, I had some mixed results. It wasn't very stable, so I just reverted back to 1600 megahertz so I can make it more stable or keep it stable but you can experiment around with it you can use 2400 megahertz or and you can clock it down to 2133 megahertz to see what's stable and you can do that if you want with the latest uh, fourth generation motherboard it is possible so um, Let's go after the video. Let's go look at the video card first. Look in the right middle of the screen. So, video card sample is a GeForce RTX 3070. So, there's no limit to what kind of graphics card you can use on either a third or fourth generation Intel i3, i5, i7 motherboard because they have UEFI BIOSes, which I s stated earlier. And they have pretty fast buses they have um they use uh, PCI Express x16 3.0 ports so you should be okay on that and let's look at the CPUs you can the best CPU you can get for a third generation motherboard would be a um, i7 3770k that would be the best CPU you can get for such a motherboard for a fourth generation um, Intel chipset you can get a uh, i7 4790k which I have which I'm using currently and uh, that's the best CPU you can get for a fourth generation Intel chipset motherboard and as for the RAM on the right side all the way to the right or memory um, most third and fourth generation i3, i5, i7 motherboards allow you to use up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. And that will depend on your motherboard and how many RAM slots are available to you. So if you have at least four um, RAM slots, then you should be able to put 32 gigabytes of RAM. So each uh, RAM module or DRAM module is about 8 gigabytes, so 8 gigabyte times 4 is 32. So that's the maximum amount of RAM you can add with this with these uh, chips that's the third or the fourth generation. So that's pretty much it for that. And um, 32 gigabytes, in my opinion, is more than enough to do anything you want to do. You can open up multiple numbers of browsers, you can stream. A video you could uh, check your email you could uh, do social media and other things you know at the same time and you shouldn't have any lag as long as you have a pretty good processor even an i7 um, 370 3770k CPU is pretty much good enough to do anything that you need to do right now and you shouldn't have a problem with it and I'm using i7 4790k and I'm I'm able to do pretty much everything I need to do with it on my other computer the third generation Intel chips that I have an i5 3570k um, base processor and I'm not having any issues performance issues with doing anything I want to do so if you have a lesser um, Intel CPU on your third generation or fourth generation chips at motherboard you could upgrade the CPU and the RAM and this should uh, give you a, a big performance boost
Okay, on the next page, um, there's a diagram of a um, fourth generation Intel i3 i5 i7 motherboard. And the one that you see there is the Asus Z97 Pro motherboard. That's the one that I have. And um, this motherboard has a M.2 slot, which you can see under the Asus uh, circular thing on there. It says M.2 support. So this has M.2. Uh, it, it will enable you to put in a M.2 NVMe SSD drive storage device in your computer and I have done that in mine I've done that in my um, Asus H97 uh, M motherboard as well I put I put my operating system or Windows 10 on a um, yeah, I put it on a Western Digital Blue 3.2 500 gigabyte SSD uh, SSD storage device so I was able to do that successfully and boot off of it and um, I also put uh, Western Digital Blue M.2 SSD in my um, Asus Z97 Pro but uh, I'm not using it as a boot device I'm just using it as a storage device because I'm still using my um, Samsung Evo 850 SS 2.5 inch SSD SATA SSD uh, for my operating system and I'm I'm pretty fine I'm pretty uh, happy with that because the performance is good enough for it but if I wanted to switch in in the future I could do that I could switch it to um, M.2 so um, on the right side you see a ASUS P8Z77V LK motherboard and this is the motherboard I'm using for my i53570K based computer and um, this does not have M.2 NVMe support it doesn't exist because this chipset didn't support it but it does have SATA 6 uh, gigabits per second like the fourth generation um, Intel chipset motherboard and that also has it so they both have that so they can both use the latest um, SATA um, SSD drives so that's possible so you see in the uh, diagram in the middle storage so you see the chipsets um, on the horizontal line M.2 SSD 2.5 SSD 3.5 SSD so a Z 77 chipset for third generation will not support an M.2 SSD but it will support 2.5 inch SSD at 6 gigabits per second and you can put any 3.5 inch hard drive in it so for my um, i53570K uh, base computer I have a um, I have one SSD which is a Samsung Evo 860 500 gigabytes I'm using that as my boot drive and that has my Windows 10 operating system on it which I boot from and I have an additional um, four SATA 3.5 inch hard drives one of them is a two uh, Western Digital 2 gigabyte um, 3.5 inch hard drive and the other three are just uh, one gigabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive so and I also have a DVD um, DVD burner which is a 5.25 inch it goes into a 5.25 inch bay and I also have a um, 5.25 inch Blu-ray player which I use to play blu-ray movies on that computer and that computer doesn't have any problems running blu-ray movies on it and um, it has plenty of hard drive space and it boots pretty quickly with the 2.5 inch SSD and I'm pretty satisfied with it 
and um, as for the chipset for H for the Z97 or H97 fourth generation chipsets, um, you could put M.2 SSD in it. It has more options, of course. You could put a 2.5 inch SSD using uh, six gigabits per second and uh, 3.5 inch hard drives, which I did on this computer that I'm using. I have. Uh, let me check how many storage devices that I have. So I have a, I have a SSD, a Samsung 850 Evo SSD. That's one storage device. I have a Seagate three terabyte hard drive. That's another. So that's I have three more Western Digital Digital one blue one terabyte hard drives. That's that's one two three four four. Um, 3.5 inch storage devices. I also have a Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte M.2 uh, storage device in, in there as well. And along with that, uh, a 5.25 inch um, DVD writer. So that's what I got in there basically. And so that, so, um, Yes, you could still use the latest, um, you could use SSDs in, in these old computers, especially the fourth generation, that's pretty much up to date, but if you um, get a newer, if you get the newest motherboard, which is uh, i7-10, um, series uh, motherboard, um, 10th generation, the only difference is the motherboards now support two NVMe or M.2 uh, storage devices instead of one, so you can have more um, more slots for that, so which is good, basically. And um, just by adding a SSD, you can really modernize and make your third or fourth generation. Um, Intel i3, i5, or i7 base computer up to date, up to date, and up to speed. So that's it for that. Okay, on this page, um, you could add SATA port expansion, you can add more SATA ports onto your computer, and I did that on my. Um, third generation ASUS P8Z77V LK motherboard so I put a I put that um, I put a PCIe 2.0 X1 controller card in there to increase my SATA ports from 6 ports to 10 ports and basically I did that because I wanted to add more hard drives to my um, computer and I will um, I plan on adding two more 3.5 inch hard drives into that computer in the future that basically use that computer to store everything like store all my data and the current specs of the computers I plan to upgrade and have upgraded so um, for my um, third generation chipset uh, computer that has an ASUS P87Z77VLK motherboard the CPU is an i53570K at 3.4 gigahertz and I plan to upgrade that to a i73770K in the near future and as for the upgrades that I have made on it so I added a GeForce GTX 1070 8 gigabyte uh, video card around late 2017 and as for the RAM I added um, I originally had 8 gigabytes but in 2017 I added um, I added I added up to um, 
16 gigabytes more, basically. So it has two sticks of 8 gigabytes, that's 16, and two sticks of 4 gigabytes, so that's 8, so that's 24 gigabytes altogether. So I added more RAM to it, and uh, that 24 gigabytes, I think, is enough to do pretty much anything, even today, even in 2020. And as for storage device, I upgraded from, I was using a Western Digital Blue uh, one terabyte mechanical hard drive, 3.5 inch to uh, basically uh, run my operating system. And But I upgraded that in 2018 to a Samsung Evo 860 2.5 inch SSD. And now it's a lot, it boots up a lot faster. And it's quite a big improvement. And I added um, four more SATA ports with a PCIe 2.0 X1 controller card around 2018. So as for my fourth generation chipset-based uh, computer, um, I have a ASUS C97 Pro. I also have a ASUS H97M. Uh, M is uh, meaning uh, micro ATX. That computer uses a micro ATX uh, motherboard. So for the CPU, I have an i7-4790K, 4.0 gigahertz, and this is the, this is the fastest uh, CPU for that chipset. For the other computer, which, is, which has ASUS H97M motherboard, I have a i7-4790, um, CPU in it, not the K, but just a uh, 4790K that runs at like 3.6 gigahertz. So as for the Z97 Pro, I upgraded the CPU in 2016, and as for the GPU, um, I bought this graphics card in like 2015. So it's a GTX 970 with four gigabytes. Before that, I I didn't have a discrete graphics card in this, in that computer. I was just using um, the onboard graphics card. So I just bought that graphics card in 2015. But I plan to upgrade um, from a GeForce GTX 970 four gigabyte to a um, GeForce G RTX 3070. Probably next year because I was thinking about buying a whole new computer this year and I was thinking about um, by upgrading I mean just just getting a whole new computer but then I changed my mind after I just uh, thought I just found out that it wasn't necessary to do so because if I got a 10th generation i i7 based computer I would probably put 32 gigabytes of RAM. I wouldn't put any more than that. And what I have right now is is basically good enough. I mean, it, I could do pretty much everything with this computer. So as for the RAM, um, I have 32 gigabytes of G Skill F3 2400C. So that's a rip jaw RAM. Um, this that's the fastest RAM for um, this computer. I was using it for XMP. I was having some issues, so I switched back to 1600 megahertz. But even with that, that's that's pretty good. So I upgraded the RAM to 16 gigabytes more in 2020. So when you use RAM, just make sure you have all the same RAM uh, model and make, and don't mix like different types of RAM together because you're going to have some issues if you do that. So if you have like Corsair XMS3s. You would just put Corsair XMS3s using the same frequency, same timing, and every the same model and everything. So that's the best way to do it with RAM. So don't mix them. Just use the same types. Um, for storage, 
I have a Samsung Evo 850 2.5 SSD, but I upgraded to a um, M.2 SSD in 2020 for the Z97 Pro. As for the H97M, um, for that one, I just I just backed everything up from from my hard drive, regular hard drive, which was also Western Digital Blue. One one terabyte hard drive and put all that into my uh, Western Digital M.2 SSD in 2020, and it's pretty fast. It's very very fast. It's lightning fast. You turn on the computer, um, you go right into Windows in maybe like 15 seconds or something. It's and even the Samsung Evo 850 2.5 inch. SSD boots up pretty fast as well but the M.2 was quite an improvement it's much faster so as for SATA ports I have six ports right now but I will add uh, four more ports later in the future because I have a gigantic uh, case for this computer it's a it's a Corsair um, the Corsair C70 case. Let me check if that's right. Yeah, it's a Corsair um, C70 mid tower gaming case. So it's the color is black. It's not military green. And this case is like absolutely huge. It's very heavy as well. So the motherboard I'm using is a full um, ATX motherboard. And I could definitely add more um, hard drives to this computer. And I will do that. So um, you're not really going to have to. If you, if you don't want to get a new computer, you could just make these small upgrades. I mean, not small upgrades. They're they're big upgrades. They, they they can be very costly as well, especially if you're getting like the the latest graphics cards, like a GeForce RTX three zero seven zero or a GeForce RTX three zero eight zero. You're going to spend um, you're going to spend more than seven hundred dollars on it. Sometimes maybe a thousand. So. I was, and if I would have gotten a new computer, I would have put that in there anyways, except I don't have to upgrade my motherboard. I don't have to upgrade my CPU. I don't have to upgrade my RAM. I don't have to take everything out of the case, you know, like the motherboard and everything, and then just put everything back in, which is laborious and it takes a lot of time. So this is, this is the easiest way way that I could find to do an upgrade. Okay, anyways, thanks for watching. My Ace 1000KS 1975 signing out.